the drivers for the energy transport via pipeline, this is three points. This is safety, environment, economics. So talking about pipeline transportation principles, <clears throat> the pipeline transport, as you pretty well know, is the transportation method for liquids and gases material over long distances and even large volumes. You need to start with the pipeline large investments, long capital return periods, and, and this is a story which is now turning on very critical, you need the acceptance by the landowners and other stakeholders which are living around your pipeline. Once the investment is done, the <clears throat> entry and exit points are fixed completely. This is counterproductive if you compare it with road or rail transport. But compared, the costs are very low. So the transport costs for gas are generally higher because of the lower energy density if you compare it to fluids. So just in the comparison. Pipeline transport is environmentally friendly and be aware there is no container, no empty container to be transported back to the starting point. So be aware there is no alternative to this energy transport via pipelines when considering health and safety. Talking about transportation costs, you can see in that pictures in green talking about gas transport. So offshore pipelines in the range of 2000 kilometers, they are more or less with the same costs in cent per kilowatt hour. So this is the energy cent per kilowatt hour as compared to a LNG tanker. So after 2000 kilometer, if the transportation is longer, the LNG tanker will be cheaper. Onshore pipelines are pretty well cheap as long as we are talking in the range of 2000 to 3000 kilometers, but then LNG is cheaper. If you compare it with crude oil, for example, these are the costs for onshore pipelines and these are the costs for a crude oil tanker. And be aware just to get your comparison, a coal ship has a huge density on board. So the carbon has a huge energy density. And so the prices for a coal ship are so low in the comparison. So why the hell we are talking about pipelines and are there any alternatives? I give you the example of the Dahl transportation system. It transports, let's say, 51 million tons a year. This is a 40 inch pipeline, 60 bars, 750 kilometers, as we learned already. If you would transport everything with a truck, the truck is 36 tons, 16 meters, so you need 2.3 million of these trucks per year be aware you need them full and the empty ones is going back. So the street or the road or the highway is huge. So for example, there's the Brenner Highway, which is connecting Austria with Italy. This is a six lanes highway. You see on the picture with the, with the mountains in the back. Today, there are two million trucks every year if we would transport the throughput of the Thai system, we need in parallel an eight lane highway for the crude oil supply only. So you see, this is a huge necessity for roads or rails if we transport everything with these kinds of road trucks. So there is no alternative for pipelines. When we are talking about safety, and environmental impact. This is the statistic for the gas pipelines in Europe. So in the year 1970, this is the number of failures. Uh, failures means leakage, small um, holes, small cracks where there happened a gas release. It started in the year 70. So this curve came down. So the number of 
interruptions of incidents is dramatically reduced over the years. Remember, so this means 0.2 failures per thousand kilometers and year. So this is a very safe system. Be aware pipelines as they are, they are absolutely safe, but you have people living around with caterpillars, with excavators, and they have as interference on the pipeline. They, they maybe dig up a hole, and so we call this third-party interference TPI. Talking about uh, safety of pipeline and transport versus rail and road in Canada, just as a comparison, you can see that the oil transport is significantly lower talking about safety for workers and environment. So HSE, Health, Safety and Environment, three, 30 times lower the injury rate compared to rail or road. The spills on the rail are two spills per billion ton and miles. So this is the transportation, um, let's say the range. If you compare it to a pipeline, it's 0.6. And which uh, in Canada and the United States is quite critically, you have a lot of fatalities with these inc incidents. So there are 71 fatalities per year on the rail transport, whilst 0.2 fatalities in the average per year on the pipeline transport. So this is just to, to give you a picture how safe is the pipeline operation. This is a picture of the Trans-Alaska pipeline. Maybe you have seen this pipeline or this picture very often. It's called the mother of all pipelines. And in this part, it's a above um, ground. Um, let's say the, the right of way, it's above ground. Uh, as we all know, normal pipelines are underground. So when we plan a pipeline, when we do the construction of a pipeline, we are looking for the ideal routing. So you can see here the routing of a pipeline and just before the construction. This is done in the year 92. When it is constructed some years later, two years later, you can see nothing, nothing any longer, only maybe a marker post in this edge. And this is the big advantage of pipelines. When they are built, you can't see them any longer. This is a big advantage. We were talking about pipelines in the year 92. If we are talking about pipelines, this is the example of a gas pipeline which is built today. Today in the northern part of Germany to Denmark, going to Aachen, which is in the western, western edge of Germany. The pipeline length should be 220 kilometers, but you have to investigate to get the acceptance for all which are involved, 600 kilometers. So different alternatives have to be investigated along the routing, which alternatives and so on. But still, there are people which are saying, I do not like this. So not in my backyard. They are living here, they are living there, they are pretty well communicated via internet. You have people which say, we want to build absolutely nothing anywhere near anybody. I call it banana. These are people which accept no construction at all. And these people are pretty well organized. They are in association, they have lobbyists, they are interconnected worldwide. They are against the pipeline. And this is the heavy fight for pipeline construction in these days. When we are talking about the ideal route of a pipeline, we have to take care what we have already built because out of the necessity that pipelines have to come to everybody, you see this is a picture out of the early 30s. The pipeline is going here through the houses. We have pipelines very near to other houses. 
um, we have pipelines in the in the vicinity in the garden. The reason is the pipelines are safe. Be aware, we're always talking about the highest class of safety for a pipeline. So the right of way, which means the distance from left to right, where we are working, we need this so-called right of way is maximum 10 meters. So we are not the owner of these 10 meters, but we have a right to work there and make some kind of maintenance. And this is the difference to a refinery or other kind of installation. You are owner of the complete ground. When we are talking about quality control at construction, as I said already, we have the steel melting process. You do the testing of different charges of metal. So you test all the, the necessary values. You make a final inspection on coating and you get a test certificate that everything is in fully accordance to your specification. The same is done during the welding of the pipeline, pipe laying, stress test. Stress test means this is a, a test with water to really check if the pipeline is tight and to change even the technical um, specified values uh, by stressing uh, the, the metal. So there you get the final documentation and all these certificates and documentation finally lead to your uh, acceptance to operate the pipeline. So for the operation, you have to show up that you do a survey by foot, by car, by helicopter to check if there are activities along right of way. If there are leakages, you have to check to prove to make leak detection um, to document everything. You have to document that you have a corrosion protection, that it is functioning. You have protocols which are showing the function of corrosion protection. You even have inline inspection where you check the inside of your pipeline and then maintenance and everything has to be documented and will be checked by the authority and so you get your license to operate the pipeline. 